Hello guys, welcome back to another edition of the Black Star series. Like your sports corner GH, my name is Adam. The Black Stars of Ghana 2, Pharaohs of Egypt 2. And in today's video, you are going to do a deep dive into the game, my own analysis. And I want you to also join in the conversation. So I'm going to ask you two questions. Two questions and I need your answers down below in the comment section. Question number one, the first goal Black Star considered. The first goal Black Star considered. Whose fault was it? In Nike Williams or Dennis Odoi? In Nike Williams or Dennis Odoi? Let me know your answer down below in the comment section. And also question number two. Do you still believe the Black Stars can qualify out of this group? Do you still believe the Black Stars can qualify out of this group? Let me know your answers down below in the comment section. And please join in in the conversation down below. Shout out to everybody. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to subscribe. If you have already subscribed too, thank you very much. And may God richly bless you. So guys, quickly, let's jump into it. And I'm going to begin with the pastor who predicted that the Black Stars were going to lose against Egypt. In fact, he also included that Mohamed Kudus was going to disgrace himself and Jordan Ayu is going to have a good game. Now, after Black Star drew with Egypt 2-2, he came back and did a U-turn saying that he said those prophecies, but then he went on his knees to pray to make sure that God gave us the results we had yesterday. Do you believe this pastor? Now, when you go to social media, everybody is labeling him a fake pastor. Do you think he's fake or he's authentic? To me, I just believe that he bit more than he could chew. And then he just capitalized on the whole hype of getting the first prediction correctly. Like, let me know your thoughts about it. He says that he prayed that is why the Black Stars got the results they had. Do you think he's still a fake pasta? Or is he just predicting like any other you know, ordinary Gandhian? Let me know your thoughts about it down below in the comment section. Now, moving away from that, after the game, the players spoke after the game, they all reacted to the 2 2 draw. And these videos are from Joel Botte on Twitter. Joel Botte on Twitter. Let's check out what the players said after the game. Um, I mean, you know what the players are going to do. Like, we train with them every day, so we know what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, whenever, for example, Kudus gets the ball, I know he's going to dribble, so I can stay far away so he can have the space. But I think the chemistry is good. To get you going. Just keep doing what we're doing. We're creating a lot of pressure in their, in, in their half. So, I mean, just keep doing what we're doing. Obviously, the mistakes is obviously unfortunate, but like I said, we just have to win on one day now. That's all we can do. Yes, today, I'm proud of my team. I repeat, because uh, everybody have uh, good run, everybody play with aggressivity, good aggressivity from the start until the end. So today I, I am proud of what Yes. I, I, I can explain it. It's, it's, uh, our game is emotional. And uh, you make the changes that you see. As regards... Um, as so guys, you just heard from the likes of Jiku Semenya and also Coach Pisutin after the Black Star drew 2-2 with Egypt. Let me know your thoughts about what they said down below in the comment section. Now let's jump into the game and I'm going to begin with the starting lineup. In fact, when I saw the starting lineup, the thing I said was that we could win this game because the factor, the factor, the X factor was in that game. Mohamed Kudus was in that game. We had a very beautiful midfield. Salis playing as a DM. Majid Ashimaru playing as a ball progressor number 8 and Mohamed Kudus playing as a number 10. I was really happy to see our midfield back in shape. That one, I went to give the coach a thumbs up. I believe that in the game, especially in the first half, the coach and the technical team did a great job. Yes, first with the selection of the players for the starting 11, they did a very great job. And also the, the, the formation, the tactics they sent into that game also really helped us in the first half. The first half, I think this is the first time I've seen the Black Star played very well in the first half and that coach Chris Hutton and he ended up scoring a goal in the first half. The first half performance was just very, very good. And I really love the fact that, you know, Mohamed Kudus coming into this game and doing so well. Mohamed Kudus coming into this game and doing so well. Me, I think Mo Salah, he faked injury. Yes, he faked injury, Papa. Because... Playing in a tough game like this, it, it got to a point, you no know, Mosala and the referee. The referee said, if you joke, I'll give you card. If you joke, I'll give you card. Mosala said that fake injury, you know, he left. But the correct Mohamed, he was in the pitch playing. Mohamed Kudus, the first half, he was very excellent. But I just believe that we could have created more chances in the first half. We could have been more clinical in the first half. But then the first half performance was one of the best I've seen. And I was really, really excited with the first half performance. Now, going to the second half, when we went to the second half, one thing I noticed was that we're defending the goal we scored in the first half. 
we started defending. And then when we were defending, I started telling my friends around me that we might end up, you know, conceding a goal because we are defending too much. And I don't know if this is a black star thing or a technical thing or the coach's decision that when we come, we should hold on to the lead we have. The only way you can be safe is to score another goal. Now, all of a sudden, second half, first 15, we were just defending. I mean, I don't know whose tactics was that. We were just defending. And honestly, when they took out Majid Ashimuru in the second half, I was, you know, hurt by a head that he picked up a knock and then he will be assessed today. That is why they took him out. But then, taking out Majid Ashimuru broke our midfield. It broke our midfield. So now there was nobody to progress the ball forward. And they brought in Baba Idrisu. So he ended up playing a double pivot. Two DMs. And Baba Idrisu, I'm going to say it again, he has fallen off so hard. He is not the Baba Idrisu we used to know. He, he, he came into the game and we, we, we started suffering. We, we, nobody was sending the ball forward. And Mohamed Kudus have to come into the middle, pick the ball, have to dribble one to buy that time. Now, I say, it was so bad. In the second half, I felt like the mistakes were too much. Individual errors. In that we like individual errors. All the goals we considered came for the right hand side. Dennis Odoi, individual errors. Osman Bukhari, individual errors. Even the goalkeeper was making individual errors. It was just too much. Jordan and you. Honestly, watching the second half, I felt Jordan and you by 65th minute, he should, have, he should have been out of the game. I'm not going to lie to you. Jordan and you should have been out of the game in the 65th minute. Because there were instances, even in the first half, that Jordan and you had the ball. He could have just passed because Inaki William had made the run. Samuel had also made the run. Then he decided to turn. He decided to give the wrong pass, a side pass. There were several times he was giving so many side passes. There were several times he was having too many touches on the ball. It wasn't necessary. Now, in the second half, there was something that happened that most, most people are talking about. That was the changes. Osman and Bukhari coming in, causing the mistake, and then also leaving. And Coach Hussein explained that he changed the player because he felt like mentally the player wasn't there. And I think that was the right decision by the coach. The coach did the right decision by taking Osman Bukhari off. Because one, he did that mistake where we considered the second goal. Two, he had three chances to put in a cross. And all was hitting the players. He wasn't putting up the crosses. So mentally, he wasn't there. And the coach made the right decision by taking him out. Now moving away from that, Mohamed Kudus, I think... The goals he scored were all true individual brilliance. And I kept on asking myself, if you minus Mohamed Kudus' individual brilliance from the game we played yesterday, we would have lost. Because none of the players were making an attempt to even score a goal, uh, to score a goal uh, except Mohamed Kudus. It was very sad. No, nobody was making an attempt. Oh, let me shoot from behind. Let me do this. Let me know. But it was Mohamed Kudus trying to do every single thing. And also, big ups to Antoine Semenyon. He really showed that he's a proper player. Antoine Semenyon really played. I was really excited with Antoine Semenyon's performance. And also, Asamoja showered a lot of praise on Mohamed Kudus. He says that you need one moment to show your worth. You need one moment to show your worth. And Mohamed Kudus showed it. Just one game, he has scored two goals. He did what people couldn't do in like about five games. Yes, Mohamed Kudus coming in one game with individual brilliance two times. He scores and then we'll go and give the ball. He will score. Then we'll go and that's the ball again. I've, I fought for uh, uh, this thing, Mohamed Kudus, because he was really playing. At the end of this game, we should be talking about Mohamed Kudus versus Simo Salah and be happy and everything. But you see, the mistakes were just too much. Individual errors were just too much and rubbed away our happiness and everything. I could see the point where we considered the second goal and then you know, Mohamed Kudus was very furious because. Michel Bonam Momo de Bonnet, Michel Namo de Bonnet, but then the way Asamwajan is praising Mohamed Kudis, trust me, Mohamed Kudis is the next Asamwajan. Yes, Mohamed Kudis is the next Asamwajan. I keep on hearing people saying that, eh, Mohamed Kudis is behaving like the team is his. I'm telling you, what countryman Zongo, that agenda they are doing on social media, countryman Zongo and the other journalists are doing on uh, social media saying that Kudus this, Kudus that. He's not, eh, yesterday he showed he was our best player. And I, I don't, like, I always say this, I don't care what people say about Mohamed Kudus on social media. He's our best player, period. He showed it yesterday, period. He's our best player. Everybody knows, period. Going to the next game, what must we do? You must avoid these individual errors, these petty, petty mistakes. Because for once, I felt like Coach Chris Hutton had most of the things right, but then the players let him down. Dennis Ordoy, Inaki William, 
Osman Bukawi. Richard Ofori at the point was just jittery. The one might say this to he is uh, Mr. Crow too much. There was a point last minute at that day. He was going to score himself. Another thing, uh, this thing, uh, Mr. Mr. Prone player. I don't know why Amate is not playing this game, but I feel like Salisu has a lot of Mr. Prone within him. He, honestly, Mr. Prone had uh, so. Going to the next game against Mozambique, we still have a chance. We still have a chance. We need to make sure to win our game and win with a lot of goals. That is all. Win with a lot of goals and we will be fine. But guys, let me know your thoughts about you know the game in total. What is your thought about it? What do you think about what Asamwaja said about Mohamed Kudush? And also, who's who are we going to blame for the first goal? Because up to now, we don't know who we are going to blame. Dennis Odoy or Inaki Williams. Because to me, I felt like both players didn't do well. They were the reasons why we actually considered those goals. But guys, let me know your thoughts about it. Thanks for joining me. My name is Adam. I'll make sure to see you in the next video. Charlie, we go vibe.